Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. So today I decided to tackle a jig that I've needed for a long time. Let's say I have this leg blank here, it's about two and a half inches square, and I want to make that leg taper down to maybe half of that um, on this end, so maybe like an inch and a quarter. And so I would need to taper it, <clears throat> make a tapering cut on one side and a tapering cut on the other side. It's nearly impossible to do um, on your table saw without some type of a specialized jig. Now in the past, I would use something like this. With, this is just a <clears throat> all-purpose type jig and, and I would nail the correct angle, you know, like stop blocks to create the correct angle on the jig and it's kind of just a one-time use type of thing it's not very repeatable because if I needed to use a different angle I'd have to take this off put on the different angle and then if I needed to go back and do the original angle there's no guarantee I'm going to get it exactly right so I needed to build a taper jig that was repeatable and accurate and so this is what I came up with I'm not uh, this isn't any revolutionary by any means as a matter of fact uh, I don't know if this is much different than um, anything else that you'd be able to find on YouTube. But I wanted to show you how easy it is to make something like this, basically out of scraps. You don't need to go to the store and go crazy and buy a whole bunch of extra stuff. Um, most of this stuff I had laying around, including this plastic knob, which I realize most people won't. I did have to go to the store to buy one piece of hardware, and I'll show that to you when I build this jig. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I built this jig and then I'm going to demonstrate how it works after the build. If you'd like to skip straight to the demonstration, you uh, I'll have a link down in the comments section that you can just jump straight to the demo. I start out by taking a scrap piece of plywood that I had and cutting two long strips out of it. The strips ended up being about 36 inches long because I'm cutting table legs with this and I don't think I'll come across a table leg at least at this point that'll be longer than 36 inches. This is just an old piece of piano hinge that I had laying around and so I figured I could use a piece of that to act as the hinge at the end of my taper jig. Next I'm going to fabricate the bracket that I use to adjust the angle of the jig. I start out by cutting a piece of flat stock to the correct length that I need it. Next I drill a starting and ending hole as well as a pivot hole where it will pivot on the jig. Then I lay out some lines between the start and ending hole. And I use a thin cutoff disc to cut a slot between those two holes, roughly using the line as my guide. Now I take the bracket to the grinder just to refine the outer edge and take off all the sharp corners.
I also wanted to take the sharp edges off of the inside of the groove and so the only way I could do that is by doing some hand filing. As you watch me struggle here you can see that I'm not very handy with the file quite yet. And here's what the finished bracket looks like. Now it's time for some assembly. First I attach the hinge to the end of the two pieces of plywood. Next, I screw the adjustment bracket to one leg of the taper jig. Now I'm pre-drilling for the hanger bolt that is going to go into the side of the taper jig. This is the one part I had to purchase. It has lag threads on one end and machine threads on the other end, so I can insert it in the wood and it'll make a nice good mechanical bond with that wood and then the other end I can screw the knob onto and use that as a lockdown knob. Next is the sacrificial stop block that I use on the back of the jig and that's what's going to help push the wood through the blade. I wanted to make it easily replaceable so I just made it out of this piece of scrap wood. I made sure to cut the legs of the taper jig tall enough so the bracket would clear the top of my rip fence when I was using it. Now I just have to keep the top of my rip fence clean so I'm not knocking things off with that bracket. Here I am just using some tools to try to figure out how to safely pass this wood through the blade while I'm running it with this jig. So the way a tapering jig works is you use kind of a combination of this adjustable angle here and your table saw fence to create the exact um, type of taper that you want, whether it be on a table leg or, or just about anything else. Basically any taper that is under um, 90 degrees, which would be difficult to do as a miter. So what I want to do is I want my taper <clears throat> on this leg to start at the 4 inch mark. So I'll mark 4 inches. Come to my jig here. Load the leg in the jig. And then I will bring the fence to where the table saw just starts touching that mark. I actually need to raise my blade to the right height. Okay. So I'll lock my fence right there. And I'll take my leg stock out. <clears throat> and now I want the taper, I want my leg to end up being half the thickness at the end. And so if this is two and a half inches wide, I want it to taper one and a quarter inches. So I run, I'll run this fence down to the very end 
and then I measure where it meets the uh, saw here and I'm just, I'm close but I'm not there. So I need to loosen my jig, move it, tighten it. Now before I make my cut I want to double check everything, make sure everything's correct. So I load my leg stock back in. I think I'm there. One difficulty I'm kind of anticipating is how to safely hold this against my jig as I'm running it through the blade. I obviously don't want to get my hands too close to the blade as I'm feeding it through and it's largely unsupported once it gets past the blade. So <clears throat> this is going to be a live and learn type moment. I'm going to try to figure it out as I go along but let's go ahead and do a test pass with this leg blank here. Well, it made a pretty good taper um, with minimal burning, but that's partly due to the fact that it's a brand new saw blade. I'm going to turn it 90 degrees here and make another pass to get my double taper. So what we have here is one complete leg. It is an inch and a quarter square on this end, two and a half inches square on this end, and it tapers on these two edges. Just gives a table a little bit more elegant feel, a little less clunky than having it be the same width all the way down. Now that the jig is set, I can run the other three legs uh, with the exact same settings and get exactly repeatable results. Another added benefit to uh, using a tapering jig is the offcuts make really great shims for large things and they also make great uh, wedges for wedge style clamps. So just a little added benefit. I know there's probably a lot of these taper jigs out there and um, a lot of instructions on how to use them. I just wanted to show you that you don't need to make a jig out of fancy material. Out of, you don't need Baltic birch plywood to make a jig like everyone seems to make you feel like you need to. I literally cut a hunk of, of hinge off of an existing hinge, cut my own bracket out of a piece of steel, and then used a bunch of leftover parts to build this jig. And it works just as good as any other jig that's out there. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button, share it with your friends, try to get the word out. Um, I try to put out one of these videos once a week. Um, go ahead and share in the comments what you think about this video, how you think you would improve this jig, and uh, if you think it would be something that you would want to use in your own shop. I appreciate all the comments and feedback I've been getting on my other videos. I try to put a lot of work into these just to make them enjoyable for you guys. So if you have any suggestions, feel free to share them with me. I'm always open to suggestions. But uh, that's it for today. I thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.